let's take a look at coding up one of these finite state machines in VHDL based upon what we just saw in section 9.2, which was how we code these using a three process model. We will do the exact same thing. We will do this push button window controller and we'll go ahead and just kind of leave that down there and we'll reference that as we go. I have created a new model sim project and I have a test bench that I've created already. Let's take a look at what the test bench looks like. We are always using the standard logic 1164 library package. That gives us the standard logic and standard logic vector and standard U logic data types. And it is going to call our finite state machine called the push button window controller. Okay. Now, if you recall that, what we really want here is we want to remember how this is going to look. Okay. So it'd be nice to have this on the screen. There ain't enough room. Let's just remind ourselves what it looks like right here. So we're going to basically create this right here where we're going to have two states. We're going to have inputs press, clock, reset, and outputs open CW and close CCW. We're going to have two states that we model using this logic right there. And what we'll do is we'll start and then we'll reference back to that. So in my test bench, I have my port definition of my component and it has clock and reset as inputs. Okay? It also has press as an input, and it has open CW as an input, close CCW as an output. Oh, excuse me, both those are outputs. And then what I do is I call it, but let's first look at the stimulus I'm going to drive. The first thing we do in a finite state machine test bench is we reset it. So we want to come out of the time equals zero in the test bench simulation, holding it and reset. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by saying reset TB, get zero, wait for five nanoseconds, and then pull it back up to one. It comes out of the reset condition for all time. That is the process you see right there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create a clock, which will just continually go between zero and one for all time. And it appears that the test bench has a period of 20 nanoseconds. So it's going to be low for 10 nan nanoseconds, high for 10 nanoseconds. That's the equivalent of a 50 megahertz clock. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have the stimulus. In its own process, we are just going to drive in the press. So we're going to start off and we're going to put in press is equal to zero, and we will wait for one clock cycle, one in a, and one in a bit. Then we will assert it very briefly for less than a clock cycle, and we will see if our finite state machine responds. It should move to a new state, and it should assert the outputs accordingly. Then what we'll do, is we'll deassert it and wait for the finite state machine to settle in its new state, which will be W closed, or oh no, W open. And then we will press it again for just a skosh, and then we'll go back to the original state, and we will then sit there forever. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So let's go ahead and let's create a new file, and we're going to call it push button window controller. And then let's go ahead and open that. To begin with, let me compile, select it. Let's get the test bench compiled up, warm up the compiler. I start my baby. And now I'm not going to type a ton because I got a ton over here. Copy and paste. I'm going to get my library, def my library declaration, I guess you'd call it. And then I'm going to get my entity of this. And I've already defined the entity from the test bench, which is how we almost always do it. So I do the test bench first. So now I'm going to come down here, and now I'm going to do my entity definition, declaration, I guess. You put that in there. You always got to remember the is. <clears throat> and then you always got to remember the end entity. And now let's do the architecture. So I'm going to do architecture, push button window controller, arc of push button window controller is. Come down here, begin. Come down here, and architecture. And now I'm ready to begin coding up my little buddy. So compile, select it. Okay. <clears throat> Let us now start thinking about how you code the next state, or excuse me, the state memory. We are going to use a technique to encode the states using a, an approach called user-defined enumerated state types. Instead of having the states have codes, like 0 and 1 or 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, we want to use descriptive names. I want my simulation to have the current state and next state be able to hold the values w underscore open and w underscore close. That way we can see it in the simulation. 
The way that you do this, and we covered how to do this way back in chapter five, and we've never used it. So this is the first time we're gonna use it. What I do is I define a new type. So this is like defining bit. Bit is the name and it can take on zero and a one. What I do here is I'm gonna call this state type. That is a new data type I've created. And I'm gonna say it can take on the value W closed and W open. I am now allowed to create signals with this type. The only rule is they can only take on these two values. This now allows me to create two new signals, which I am going to call current underscore state and next underscore state, and I'm going to give them the type state type. Those two signals now hold my current state and next state, but what's beautiful is that they have the, that you can only assign W open and W close to them. They will show up like that in the simulation and this is fully synthesizable. This is the agreed upon way that we can model states. Okay, now I'm gonna come down here and I'm ready to fire up a process for state memory. And I'm gonna name these ones, okay? I wanna name them because I'm gonna have three processes and I wanna make sure that I name them so I can see them in the simulation. I'm gonna fire up keyword process and now I do what's in the sensitivity list. Always clock, always reset, now I can begin, and now I come down here, begin, come down here and do my end process, and now here we go. We model the state memory almost identically to the way that we model a D flip-flop. We need the ability to handle an asynchronous active low reset and also a rising edge triggered clock. The asynchronous reset is always the top signal, so I model its functionality first. I say, if reset equals zero, then I am going to do what? What do I want to do when I get reset? We want to put the current state to a known value. We can only assign it to one of the two in this examples, but we are always going to define one of our states as what we call the reset states. It's where you start your finite state machine. So in this situation, let's just say current state gets assigned W closed, okay? And that should match our state diagram that we have in the book, which is correct. Notice a few things. I actually just assigned directly to this new signal that I created called current state, and I actually assigned it W closed. This is perfectly legal. Life is good. Now I need to handle the situation where I get a rising edge of a clock. So I'm gonna use the rising edge function from the standard Logic 1164 package. I'm gonna type rising, edge, notice how it changed colors, of the clock, else if boom, 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 and then I do then. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna say, if I get a rising edge of a clock and I'm not in reset, who do I assign to next, or to current state? Always and forever, nothing more than next state, okay? So I just look at this thing right here. If I look at this, I am gonna assign current state gets next state. That's what I'm gonna do always, okay? So I come over to here and I can just say current state gets next state. At that moment, I'm done. What do I do under all other situations? I don't do anything. I just hold current state and wait for the next clock or reset, so I don't do anything. The way that I model nothing is with nothing. So I just say end if, I got my end process right there. And at this moment, let's give this a compile and make sure that we don't got anything crazy. So I'm gonna compile selected, two errors. Anybody see what it is? Oh, you missed the assignment. Yeah, you missed for the assignment for current state to be closed. Yes, <laughs> nice. Forgot the equals, compile, selected, nice. <laughs> okay, now let's do the next state logic, okay? So I'm gonna call this next state logic it is going to be a process, and who's in the sensitivity list? It is going to be current state and the inputs. So I'm just going to pop right in there. Current state and the input press. Now I want you to think about this. Begin, I'm going to end my process, and now I want to know what am I going to do here? I need to put some combinational logic in here to figure out what I'm gonna do. 
So here's one way that you can do this. Let's start with a case statement and let's look at the current state. So I'm going to say case current state and then I'm going to say when I'm in W closed, I want to do the following. But when I'm in that state, I have two situations for the input. Press can either be 0 or a 1. So I actually have to embed some more combination logic. So let's do this. If press is equal to 0, then what am I going to do? Next state will be equal to W closed. That means I'm going to sit there. Otherwise, press had to be a 1. So I'm going to say next state gets what? W open. And then let's end that if else. So I say end if. And now let's do a little copy and paste. I need to also list out the situation where what if I'm in the other state, which is W open? So if I'm sitting in W open, if press is equal to a 0, I want to say next state is W open. Just sit there. Otherwise, press had to be pressed or asserted. That means I'm going back to W closed. At this moment, I should be done. So what I can do is I can just say when others to be, you know, complete. And I can say, otherwise, go ahead and just set next state back to W closed. That'll be kind of the catch-all situation in case the whole thing goes wonkers. All right. All I do now is I end up my case and my process, and let's get a compile in here. So let's see if this works. Compile, select it. Beautiful. Now we're ready for our last one. This one is a little smaller because what we're going to do is look at the output logic. Its process is combinational logic. It looks at current state and press, and then we're off and running. So I'm going to do the following. I'm going to copy this process and see what I can change in order to make it become my output logic. So I'm going to paste that down, and this is now going to become my output logic. The sensitivity list looks at current state and press. Say begin when I'm in W closed. If press is equal to a zero, what? Remember what we are actually assigning to. We are assigning to the outputs, which are called open CW gets assigned what? Nothing. And then closed CCW gets assigned what? Nothing. I'm just sitting there. OK, those are my statements. Okay, So I've got my if press is equal to 0, then, and I pop those pop. Oh, what happened there? Oh, god, what happened? Oh, boy. The, un <laughs> the editor is going crazy on me. We're running out of time, so let's do this quick. Open CW gets assigned a 0, and then closed. CCW gets assigned a zero. Needs to be capital. OK, now I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to say, boom. Otherwise, if press is pressed, I'm going to make this a one. And then I come down here, if, op if I'm in the open state, and I get pressed, do nothing. Otherwise, if I'm in the open state, and I get pressed, assert that one. OK, now let's see if that compiled. We don't have time for it not to. 10 errors, oh my goodness. Do you see anything what it is? Illegal target assignment here. Oh, close. Oh, that'll work. Close. So I'll come into here and I'll do close. And now let's compile that. Three errors, we're getting close. Begin, oh, I left my begin in there. So now I'm going to come in here. Let's save that up. This probably will get it. Compile selected. Two errors. Oh, when others. Yeah, you're right. So when others, we need this signal assignment here. Getting close. Compile selected. Successful. We did it. And now what's left is we need to run the simulation. So I load it up. 
I add to wave signals in design this time because I want to go into the main thing and I want to see <clears throat> my next state and current state. So I'm going to run it for 100 nanoseconds. And now the beauty of this is that you can see here's clock reset, all these test bench signals. I'm actually going to nuke them because all I care about is inside of my test bench. Look at how I can see the states, current state and next state. So I can see that I start out in W closed. Then here comes the input press. I assert open and I move in the next state, which is W open. Then I sit there. Then I see press asserted again. I assert the other output and I go back to W closed. This is beautiful because in the simulation I get to see this actual current state and next state names and this is fully synthesizable. And that's how you design this in VHDL.